Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Black on Black Cinema. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. All right, guys, we're back. This is episode 195 uh, for Fatal. Um, unfortunately, Tiara and Terrence cannot join us tonight, and I am sad. I am sad to know that that is true. Um, however, Tiara, Tiara wanted to let everyone know that um, she thinks that it was the snub of the year that Fatal was not nominated for any Oscars at all. Yeah, I mean, I'm shocked after watching it. I mean, I, I was floored by that revelation. Um, <laughs> she did want us. She she did want to say that she defends all the women in this movie, inclu- including and especially. I thought it was a little weird, but she she said that Hillary Swank should be defended. Her all her actions were justified. <laughs> um. So yeah, yeah, that's no, fine. Um. This is a movie. Uh. This is this is directed by Dion Taylor and it is written by David Lowry. Uh more on them later, uh, because we were just looking up some other stuff they did, um, which makes a lot of sense. Um obviously this is starring Hillary Swank, Michael Ely, um, Mike Coulter, and weirdly Jeffrey Owens is in this. So good for him. You know, fresh off of his trying to people trying to shame him for working at Trader Joe's, which I thought was fucked up. Um but it's good to see that guy working again. Um yeah, the, the the plot of this movie is that a guy cheats on his wife. Michael Ely cheats on his wife uh, with this woman that he meets in Vegas, played by Hillary Swank. And then uh, later on, when he's back home, his house gets broken into, um, and he he fights off the intruder, and um, you know he escapes with his life. Obviously, he's fine. Um, and the lead detective on the case turns out to be dan 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 uh, Hillary Swank, the uh, the woman that he was uh, blowing. Uh, blowing her back out in Vegas. She didn't even know. Um, Micah, you uh, you were dying to do this movie. Uh, uh, you no no get <laughs> out of here get out of here. Uh, this is some revisionist history if I've ever seen it. Uh, look, but I don't mind doing movies like this. This is uh, I love them. This is these are these are like you know these uh, black people can be in trash too, right? Yes, and um, and boy. Is this just a big old bag of it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the the every decision that everyone makes in this movie is dumb. Uh, there are no heroes in this. Movie. <laughs> there are not any. <laughs> no. like, as much as this movie is really desperately trying to make Michael Ely's character seem like some sort of nice guy, he's not. He's not. No, and he's dumb. And and. and He's not the dumbest character. No, there's a lot of dumb people. He's related to the Um, dumbest character. (laughs) He's not the dumbest. Um, you know, I I think um, you know, this this plot is you know, not maybe not super predictable, but it's predictable, right? Like yeah, like you can see the turns coming, but instead of turning left, they turned like right and then t- made two lefts like <laughs> right why didn't why didn't you just turn left right like so um look uh, michael ely is um he's he's giving like a he's giving like a uh i just need to pay my rent kind of performance like because michael <laughs> ely is kind of a charming guy right like he can yeah. he you know he he's that's why you that's why you hire Michael Ely, right? He's black with blue eyes and curly hair, right? Like right. He, he's, he's a handsome lead. Right. And uh, I'm just not feel like it just feels like he's just not into this into this uh into this role. <laughs> um look. <laughs> I'm going to try not to be me throughout this entire review. I'm a fail. <laughs> I'm a fail. I'm a, I know I'm about to I'm about to tell myself in about 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> look. Uh, we'll get to we'll get to the other co-star, but I just want to go because that might be a minute. But Mike Coulter, Mike Coulter is at a Morris chestnut chestnut level for me. 
I, I don't know. I don't like this dude. Yeah. Really <laughs> okay. Here's my thing with Mike Coulter as I went on a mini rant when I was watching this with my wife. And she didn't even ask me to pause it because that's how much she cared about this movie as it was going on. I need people to stop casting Mike Coulter. And I apparently, like, he does pretty good on that show, Evil. I've never seen it. Like, i just never seen it. Not not that because he's on it, I don't watch it. It's not, I just haven't seen it. My thing with Mike Coulter is this. Stop casting him as dudes from around the way. He isn't. He sounds ridiculous trying to talk like a homeboy. It's, it don't work. It don't work. It would be like hiring me to play that role. It doesn't work. It just simply yo, yo. doesn't work. Yo, 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 dog. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> on, why man. would you hire that guy to play the hero of Harlem? No, he he sounds ridiculous. It's just not the way that guy talks. Like, he just doesn't. So, yeah, he's like, hey, what's going on, motherfuckers? Like, all right, all right, all right. Like, stop. It's just... <laughs> There is definitely a dude who can play that role better, who is a little bit more natural. It just doesn't work for him. It doesn't. It just and feels. It feels like. It feels like seventies black exploitation, right? Like they hire not in these, a good way. They hire these anyway. like in the in the black exploitation era. They hired like legit like actors to play pimps and 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 shit like that. And you know these classically trained actors are using their proper diction and they're like acting acting with a capital a but they're like talking about like like pimping hoes and shit yeah for some people it it works for some it works but not not for all and he is not one of them he ain't one of them yo he really isn't i hate and look maybe that's like weirdly we can have like a an actual serious conversation about that like there is something to be said about trying to pigeonhole black actors right and and i feel like they're trying to pigeonhole him as like this tough dude from the streets i'm like yeah luke cage is a role man and like i didn't think he was that great at it but like he was he was okay but don't keep casting that guy as those type of roles it doesn't work for him it doesn't like he was a scumbag in um what was the uh what was the movie with the um girls trip right but he wasn't trying to talk like a dude from around the way because he just talked like himself and he came off much better in that movie. I mean, his character was a jerk, but like his performance came off much better and much more natural because he wasn't given dialogue that doesn't fit him. It's just, it's weird. Like I'm not going to give, like I don't really enjoy watching actors who do like that is the natural way they speak given roles where they're trying to speak like Mike Coulter speaks. Like, it also doesn't work. And, you know, so it does go both ways. You should, whoever, like, these casting directors are, I would almost guarantee you they're white. I would almost guarantee you they're white. So yeah. it's just a little, to me, it's a little weird. And I, and I actually really um, don't like, don't care for that, um, for that casting at all. Also, that dude's name is Rafe in this movie. <laughs> This is a movie for white people, right? Like, this was a movie they palette swapped, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Right, because Derek Tyler, like, that could be that could be anything. Rafe? I mean, that character could be black, right? Derek Tyler, he's a basketball player now. Right. He's to, like, oh, he's a former like, criminal, right? Like, yeah, I could see, right. Right, I could see them playing that up. But his, his business partner, Rafe? <laughs> Rafe? No. Rafe Grimes. No. No. That's a white guy. That that character was white originally. Like, just change the name. Just make his name Robert. Oh, Who the fuck man. is it? Rafe. Like, there's no black dude named Rafe. Like, come on, knock it off. And don't message my cousin's name is Rafe. All right, all right. Nobody cares. Uh, no, it ain't. It's, it's short for fucking. Uh, uh, it's short for something else. Yeah. I can't even think of anything it would be short for because you're lying. Yeah, Raphael. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Yeah, it was just weird. Um. Yeah, so I, I didn't care for that casting. I'm sorry, but I interrupted you. Michael Ely uh, paying rent with his performance. Yeah, it's not. Um, it's not. It's certainly not his best. I mean, he's certainly not dropping kids out of windows. But I feel like that might be his best. Uh, but he's not. Um, I, I I just didn't feel it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you could tell he just he just wasn't there for it. Um, look, Hillary Swank. 
<laughs> Hillary Swank. I, I I like Hillary Swank as an actress. Yeah. Um. She she makes a she makes a good villain here. Uh. She she looks very much like a villain in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um. And I'm just gonna say it. I ain't fucking up my marriage for Hillary Swank. Yet. All right. Thank I'm you. Not. Thank you. I'm thank not. you. Thank you. Boy, yo. Like okay. all I all I can think of was they went. <laughs> to vegas for a bachelor party during where there was a bunch of nba players which means there are a bunch of women who want to fuck nba players around (laughs) and hillary swank was the one that you chose that was the best option come on look she's fine like uh, like there's nothing wrong with hillary swank perfectly fine looking person right not like fine like fine Right. But knock it off. (laughs) Come on, yo. Come on, yo. Like, I don't care how rocky my marriage is. I'm not going to jeopardize it. And I'm not going to, if I am going to jeopardize it, I'm not going to jeopardize it for Hillary Swank. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Like, I'm just not, yo. No, you got to go big. Like, if you're going to, if you're going to cheat, cheat up. Like, you see your wife? Yeah. Like, his (laughs) wife is gorgeous. Like, what? (laughs) Come on. No offense to Hillary Swank. Um, but, you know. but knock it off. <laughs> it's like, come on, dude. Come on. Come on. Um, yeah, I look, man, I thought this movie was bad. Um, I didn't hate it. Like, I didn't hate it. And I certainly liked it more than I thought I would. But that doesn't mean it's good because it isn't. Um, this movie, I thought this movie would be more fun. And it's not fun. Um, yeah, that's a fair that, point. That movie with uh, Omar Epps and Nia Long. Oh, that was fun. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. And right. that's what I was expecting, right? Like, I was expecting, you know, that that kind of fun suspense thriller. You know what I mean? Right. Like, the type, the type of shit you take a date to when they're too scared for horror movies, but you still want them to jump in your arms. You right. Know yeah. I mean? By the way, my wife fell for every jump scare. Every single one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> like, this is... You know, this is like boilerplate nonsense. Like, of course. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Every single one of them. So, yeah, this movie took itself just a little bit too seriously for my taste, man. And that, look, uh, that's all you have to do to make them work. Don't take them seriously. Right. Like, yeah. this is, you know, it, it had some 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 turns and, uh, you know, it got me at one point like, oh, okay. Well, it didn't get me, but like. The break in, okay, this is obviously Mike Coulter's idea, right? But then the fact that, you know, who Mike Coulter is sleeping with, like, all right, I, I didn't know that. Uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, it just wasn't fun. It just wasn't fun. And I need these movies, I need these movies to be fun. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, it turns into a horror. She, uh, Hillary Swank turns into a horror movie villain at the end. Yeah, um, both of them motherfuckers should have died. Both of them. Look, I got I got serious uh, real world issues with the ending of this movie. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not how that would have worked. No, I'm put my hands up. Oh, word, <laughs> nigga, you killed a cop. <laughs> you ain't gonna like, make it to a trial. It, yeah. Trial? <laughs> no, <laughs> you ain't make it out of his apartment building. That shit didn't make any sense to me. Um, yeah, overall. Uh, uh, Two very large thumbs down. Um, but I will say this. I was like, I was entertained in, in some parts. It dragged in others, which again, like the fun part, like Hillary Swing's villain turn is not bad. She's chewing up some serious scenery. But my yeah. big, my biggest issue with this movie, my second biggest issue with this movie <laughs> is the dialogue hits like a slow motion sesame seed falling off of a hamburger butt in a Zack Snyder movie. Like every bit of the dialogue is just like someone just clunk, clunk, clunk. I'm like, she like, it doesn't, nothing flows well. And, and case in point, and I knew this was going to, I knew this was how it was going to be because the opening dialogue where he's giving this sort of, you know, soliloquy or whatever while he's driving is awful. 
It's awful. I thought I was watching. I thought I was watching a Carl Weber movie at one point. Right. It yeah, did right feel like that a little it just bit. Was like, wow, this is my. This is what Michael Ely is doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> right. Come on, man. You were an almost human. Like, you're better than this. I, he literally is like. I mean, this is actual dialogue. I was always the smart one, and you don't see him in this. The the one who played the one who played. Wait, well, hold on, because I don't want to miss the the stellar uh, the stellar dialogue. dialogue. Uh, the one who played to win, like, and I always won, and I was damn good at it. I was the best. Like, who talks like that? I was the best. Like, it's just really clunky dialogue. Now, one could make an argument that the dialogues, uh, this piss poor dialogue, has a lot to do with the writing. Well, 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 the writer of this movie is named David Laurie, and he's done such um, such movies as Passenger 57, um, which bothers me because I love Passenger 57. Dialogue, not the best. One of the greatest lines of all time. Dialogue overall, not the best. Um, but he also did Lakeview Terrace. He also did Obsessed with Beyonce and Idris Elba, which we've, we've reviewed that was a fun movie. That's a, that's a yeah, that's a, that's a fun one, right? Um I hear like View Terrace is like a pretty fun one too. That one might be good. Well, Samuel Jackson as the cop harassing the uh, interracial couple. I kind of yeah, I kind of want to do that. that. Yeah, yeah. That feel that I've never seen like View Terrace, but I've seen clips of it. I, I feel like I would enjoy it. Um he also did The Intruder. That was the one with Michael Ealy and Megan Good. Um where what is it? Um Dennis Quaid is like Trying to like attack them or some shit. I kind of want to see that. Oh yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Um, and then he also did Star Trek Five: The Final Frontier, which is fucking weird and arguably one of the worst Star Trek movies of all time. Um, yeah, no, this is uh, that all makes sense, but like the the dialogue is horrible. Like it's really horrible, and the worst part of this movie to me are the performances. Like. Michael Ely is just paying rent, like you said. Uh, and look, here, I'm going to be really mean for a second. Uh, what the fuck happened to Michael Ely? Is he a vegan now or some shit? He looks yeah, so skinny and sunken. It, like, he, like his he face. Looks, he didn't like look he was never. He was never like a, like a big, you know, buff dude or even no. like an athletic build. But um, he, he, <laughs> he has sex with this white woman and has sucked the soul out of him. Yeah. And and yeah, he just uh, didn't. He he looked very unhealthy to me. He looks yeah. He looks unwell. I don't know if uh, I don't know if he. I, I'm not. I don't know if he's like there's something wrong or anything. But uh, he looks different. He does. He does. And look, I, and I'm not. I'm actually not going to try to like make fun of that because the last time people did that, turns out Chadwick Boseman had cancer, right? Like, and they're you know, like so. I'm not. I'm I'm not slamming the guy. I just didn't think he looked well. Like I, I was just kind of like. Like, my wife was, like, a big Michael Ealy fan, and immediately she was like, he doesn't look good. Like, what's going on? And, right. you know, uh, and he just he just kind of looked like he was kind of roughing it through the, the whole uh, movie. So I hope he's okay. Like, it, just, it was just an observation. Um, the opening sequence of this movie, so it starts with um, Derek. His wife um, uh, played uh, his wife Tracy, played by uh, Damaris Lewis. Um, Mike Coulter, and then Mike Coulter's, I guess, lady friend. Right? She's not a real character in this movie. He's just somebody he's with. Um, and the four of them are sitting around uh, at this place. And um, one, this this house is fucking gorgeous. Jesus Christ. Um, and they're you know they're talking and and they're basically like. Like there, there's like an indication that Mike Coulter's character, or excuse me, um, uh, Derek, uh, played by Michael Ely's, uh, Michael Ely, him and his wife are like kind of on the outs. Like they, they've got some like say, some tension, and I don't like how they introduce their relationship because it makes Michael Ely's wife look like a straight up bitch, <laughs> like wait, where it makes him look like the nice guy, which I thought was fucked up, um. But then you come to find out things later and you're like, they're both trash bags. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know who to, there's no one to root for. Right. Um, yeah. So they were talking about like, he, he goes to do a toast with, um, with Rafe and um, they're like to all the money we've made. 
or all the success we've had and what we've built. And then his wife is like, no, the success we've built. And it was like, yeah, you, you were right. All right. Uh, yeah, you, you were, you were shooting. You were shooting I mean, while I was in that, the gym. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's foreshadowing, Jay. You see, that's, that's foreshadowing. For is it? What is <laughs> mm, Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I, one, I, I really hate Mike Coulter's character, by the way. I would, I would just like to point that out. I kind of hate Mike Coulter. <laughs> I kind of hate Mike Coulter. Uh, you're right. It's because he gets, they're putting him in these like, uh, nigger roles, right? Like that's you know, and he ain't he ain't that type of guy. He isn't. Like ironically, knowing the background of Derek's character, it would make more sense for that character to be more of like a homeboy type character than yeah. than Rafe's character. I mean, we don't know anything about Rafe, right? So they just right. just throw that in. Um, so back at home, like the next day, we see uh, Tracy get out of the pool. She is. <sighs> She is a, a knockout. She's a model. Yeah. She's a model. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that woman is gorgeous. Um, I like, I, look, I think she's a beautiful woman. Her acting is horrible. It's horrible. Like, her line delivery is horrible. And that's, I'm not trying to shit on her. Like, like I don't know. She's, I, I guess she's like maybe just early starting out or whatever, but it's not good. It's not good. And, it sets a really bad precedent for the rest of this movie. Like it just she does. In, uh, she was in Black Klansman. I I saw that. I, I'm not sure who she was, but um, but no, her 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 acting was horrible. Like it just this is bad. Like, it's and she's bad. in uh she's in Titans. She's uh Starfire's uh sister, I believe. Oh okay. So I guess she's gonna be coming in a new season. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't gotten there. Well. Her acting matches a lot of the acting on there, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not good. <laughs> She'll fit in. That's fine. It's fine. Look, look, everybody gotta start somewhere. I'm not an actor either, so I'm not trying to try to be try to be nice. Um so so my so basically uh Derek is like, look, um you've been spending a lot of like late nights at your clients, like fuck's going on. And she's like, look. Don't, you know, don't question me because you used to spend a lot of, you know, late nights, you know, trying to woo your clients. And now, you know, you're trying to give me a hard time. Like, don't do that. And he's like, uh, you right. But still like, <laughs> like you fucking around or like, what's the deal? Right. And, um, and so she's like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Just go to Vegas with your friends. Um, you know, I I'm tired of talking to you about it. He's like, all right, you know, whatever. We'll stay on the outs. Um, one, well, this dude is like a sports agent. Um, I chose the wrong career path. That's uh, uh, apparently. God <laughs> damn, dude! This All you dude do is is do the do the grunt work for celebrities, and uh, and you get paid. I mean, it's just setting up contracts and shit. Like this dude is got. I get. I'm too poor to even know. I guess it's a, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. I think it's a Lamborghini. Um, it's like a Lamborghini. I just don't know what type of Lamborghini. An expensive one. <laughs> um, and he's got the platform that turns and shit. So it, it like. Yeah, he's got the Batmobile platform. That's so cool, man. <laughs> That's so fucking cool. I love it. Um, so yeah, he's like, all right, let me, let me just hop in, um, and, and, uh, go about my day. Um, and he goes to work, right? Good for him, right? The black man making it. Um, things are going well. Uh, he goes, he, I guess he goes to the airport. They fly out him and uh, his buddies. They fly out to Vegas, um, because it's a, it's one of their friends bachelor party. Now, Mike Coulter's character, Rafe, again, a black man, uh, with the name Rafe, um, says, look, why are you sitting here looking all sad and shit? We're in Vegas. They got all these NBA players here. There's a bunch of NBA pussy here. Like, let's, why don't you, why don't you have a good time? And he's like, look, man. Uh, me and the wife are on the outs. Shit's not going well. He, my culture's character says, look, it's not a big deal. You've been married for seven years. That's like forever. <laughs> like, come on, man. Nobody stays married that long. So why don't you just take your wedding ring off? You think she's cheating on you? Why don't you get yourself a free pass? You in Vegas, baby. That's the rules. So he takes Derek's ring takes it off and takes it from him. And he's like, you got 24 hours, do whatever you want to do. And 
one at this point I, at this point i looked at my wife and i said wow this guy's the worst friend ever that is exactly what i said <laughs> no that's not a good friend that's not a good friend no fuck that what not nah, cheat on your wife dog <laughs> <laughs> nigga we're not friends anymore <laughs> like what are you doing the only look the only way i would say that's an acceptable bit of behavior if you have proof that your spouse has cheated on you and you're like, you know yeah, what? Yeah, Fuck that. Right, right. And even then, man, like, hey, don't do that. Come like, on, yo. <laughs> what be the better. Fuck are we doing? Yeah, just get a divorce. <laughs> like, like if I knew my wife cheated on me, I would call her and I'd be like, I want a divorce because you cheated on me. By the way, I'm about to get knee deep in this pussy in Vegas. <laughs> like, I <laughs> want you to know right now <laughs> before this happens. I'm gonna go get checks notes. Hillary Swank. <laughs> like, come on. Um. But yeah, that that's yeah, that makes no sense. It's, that I said to my wife, I was like, "That's the best he could do." <laughs> come on, yo! <laughs> like he's a handsome guy, yo! Like come on, man. like come I on. I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking at a woman in the background dancing right now who looks like Priyanka Chopra. Like <laughs> when they're sitting at the bar, there's a woman just in the background being fine. Come <laughs> on, yo! <laughs> like, what are we doing? Yeah, nah. Oh, come on, come on. They should have cast. They should have cast the woman who played Tracy as as the detective. <laughs> like that would have yeah, made more sense. A- <laughs> I mean, it would requ- it would require the same level of acting. It's fine. Um, so oh, shit. so yeah. This this shitty best friend is like, yeah, all right, go fuck, go fuck some other random woman. All right, I guess. Um, and Michael Ely's a piece of shit too because he's like, you know what? He had like one minute to think, wow, that, that's fucked up for you to say that. And then the next moment, this dude walking down the stairs like, hey, what's up, ladies? Like, he was like ready to cheat immediately. Like the ring was literally the only thing holding him back. <laughs> like that was Well, it. That's, that's literally what wedding rings are for, right? They, they have the magical power to as soon as you take it off, then right. it's like, oh, 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 this what it's like to be single again? <laughs> like. He, it's got a it's got a, a green lantern power if he doesn't say the the, the fucking uh, phrase <laughs> um yeah so he immediately he goes to the bar uh i assume uh, uh this is the part you're talking about where um priyanka yeah, chopra is there <laughs> yeah there's just some woman in the background just just being fine like, yep all right yo <laughs> hillary swing yeah that's hilarious um so hillary swank is at the bar and um well one she's out dancing um and michael ely's like oh mm, mediocre white woman i like that um and she comes over to the bar uh to get something to drink and this other dude is there and he tries to pick her up and he does this thing where i'm like does this shit work like i i don't know right because i i was never like mr slick in the club like that was just never my thing but apparently this dude was like hey how about we just skip the drinks you know, and like, just like pushes up on her. She's like, get your hands off me. Get the fuck out of here. I'm like, he wouldn't try that if it didn't work. Right. Guys are nothing but predictable. Uh, yeah, I would have to imagine. Right. Like if you, if you are, look, women are, are, are sexual beings. They find people, they find people that, you know, they, they just want to have sex with. Right. If you're good looking enough, uh, if this guy thinks he's good looking enough, that probably does work. Right. I wouldn't know. I've never approached a woman ever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that in me. I am not a pretty Not man. ever? Uh, I, not even my wife. I met my wife through, uh, through Match.com, and she found me. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, this guy looks... <laughs> He's fine. He's like Whatever. somebody I can manipulate. <laughs> <laughs> and she was right. Um... No, I mean, I've definitely gone to him and talked to him. Like, the club scene is the worst, though. Like, that's the worst. I would have to imagine. I would have to imagine. I didn't. I haven't been to too many clubs. So, by the way, that woman in the background you're talking about. Yeah, I would. I would. I would talk to her <laughs> one thousand times, like a thousand times sooner than I would talk to Hillary Swank. Like, no, knock it off. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, yeah, talking to women in a club is like the worst. Because either they're with other women, which you have to then, like, try to work into that dynamic. And if you don't have enough, like, dudes to, like, flank that system, like, 
that doesn't work. You don't want to go. You don't go into war alone. Like that's crazy. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, exactly. You gotta be. You gotta be Idris Alba to pull that shit off. Like that shit don't work. <laughs> um, because like even if they find you attractive, like they might just be like, "No, nah, I'm good," just to kind of clown you. Like, right. it's fucked up. <laughs> um, no, no, I I don't. I'm glad I'm out of the game. I don't know. I don't know what you young people are doing. Like I just, I don't <laughs> I don't get it. No. Going to clubs? No. Um, no, I I met my wife through a, like a just a party with a mutual friend. Like, yeah, I met her there. So, no, yeah, where there's not blaring music and you know four hundred dollar bottles of whatever and people trying to impress yeah, speak, others. Speaking of blaring music, right? Like the two of them are talking. And she he's like, "Well, how you doing? Like, is it hot in here or is it just you?" <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, "What? That's the best you got." And uh, and they start talking, and um, and the music's loud, and he's like, "Hey, by the way, I'm married." And uh, she's like, "What? I can't hear you." And this nigga is just like, "You uh, want to go dance? Like, what yeah. the f- like, like, nah, yo, like, was that the movie trying to trying to make it seem like um, uh, uh, Michael Ealy is a good guy?" I, I guess. Here's my thing. I think she did hear him. <laughs> I think she was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, what you say? Huh? Huh? See if you repeat it. Because if you repeat it, then that's different. If you don't say nothing, you'd be like, well, I said it. So, you know, right, when so she, so when she started awful. blowing me later, I mean, she knew it's not my fault. Like, all right. <laughs> no, nigga. That's not well, that She's way. the whore, not me. Right. Like, all right. <laughs> she's, yeah, a, all right. she's a succubus. It's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> hashtag black men don't cheat. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they started dancing in the club. Look, one of the, one of my favorite things in club scenes now, uh, after reviewing uh, a ton of movies, is the people in the background dancing because <laughs> they're not listening to the same music. They can't be because there's a white dude next to them. It's like, it's, you know, some sort of like slowish hip hop music or whatever. I don't know. But there's like a white guy and he's just like, <laughs> like, they're like nigga, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yo, it's he's not, not listening to the same music at all. <laughs> it's, it's my understanding that they don't necessarily play music on the set. No, they right? don't. They don't. They're just like, all right, everybody dance. And then they put the music in, you know, after the fact. Right. Uh, during the editing process. So that's why everyone is always like, everyone's, uh, that's why either everyone is just two stepping it or there's always people dancing and like very weird, like, like arrhythmic, arrhythmically. Yeah. Like this is what I do just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, that's not the beat that's on, <laughs> like at all. Um, but that's fucked up. They just they they put that white dude out there to just embarrass himself. Like, nah, go stand next to the stars. People want to laugh at you. Um, so they go back to her. Uh, they go back to her room. Um, he gives her he gives her the uh, the light skinned version of blacked. Um, she seems uh, pretty happy about it. Uh, look, I'm not I'm not gonna pretend I wouldn't sleep with Hillary Swank. All right, I'm not I'm not gonna sit there and lie. Make that lie. Look, look, Hillary Swank in this movie. It's like that episode of Seinfeld, right? where Jerry would date this woman who in certain light would look amazing, but in like a different light would mm. look very less amazing. Yeah. And that is what's happening with Hillary Swank in this movie. Yeah. Like in the club, I was like, all right, I get it. Like she's attractive. Like, but in the harsh light of day, <laughs> she's fine. She's fine. She's just like, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, so next morning, uh, after, uh, the episode of Blacked was over, um, Michael Ely decided, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and put my clothes on and get the fuck out of here. And she wakes up and she's like, oh, where you going? Hmm? Where you going, buddy? It's like, I thought I'd, I thought I'd get out of here. You know, what happens in Vegas? Ah, I gotta go. It's like, hey, you, you, you see my phone? She's like, yeah, I put in the, put in the, the, the safe. The hotel, the hotel room safe. He's like, the fuck you do that for? Like, that's weird. <laughs> it's some weird shit. And she's like, oh, I just wanted to make sure you didn't, uh, you didn't leave before I woke up. It's like, all right, cool. <laughs> uh, you give me that combination? Like, what's up? And she was like, nah, I'm gonna need some more dick though. He was like, what? 
look, um, I I did appreciate his line. So I got to fuck it out of you. <laughs> she's like, pretty much. Yeah, she's like, yeah, yeah, you do. And I'd be like, look, it is what it is. Like, don't fuck around. <laughs> Give me that code. Like, I ain't got time to be here all day. Um, uh, info, info a penny, info a pound. But yeah, literally, you know, literally, <laughs> info a pound. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so yeah, he. Uh, so he gave her, you know, he gave her the morning business. God bless. And uh, then she gave him the code. Um, and my wife immediately was like, "That's gross. Like that's a really gross thing to do to somebody." And I'm thinking to myself, I mean, I get it. I get it. <laughs> If I'm Michael Ely, I'm like, this is not what I wanted to do this morning, but I will. I will make the sacrifices that need to be made. Um, so, yeah. So, she eventually does give him the code, and uh, and he gets his phone. Meanwhile, she's passed the fuck out. Uh, good for him. Um, he heads back home. Uh, they were in Vegas, so he flew back home. Um, everything should be fine, right? Um that night he he's you know he he's he comes back or the next day he comes he comes to work his cousin uh Tyron 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 shows up Tyron Tyron the uh no the actor's real name is Tyron because uh he, he he's not so folks if you if you <laughs> if you if you're new to uh movies. to uh movies reviews with Jay and myself we have discovered that when a character's name is the same as the actor's name, that actor is generally very bad because <laughs> if on set the person does not hear their actual name being called or spoken to, like in the scene, they won't respond. Right. So you generally have to ca- have to name bad actors that you have to name their characters after their first name so that they actually respond. Right. And it feels natural, more, more natural. Right. And I feel Uh, like this one fits. Yeah. But yo, he's been in a lot of movies. Yeah. He has been stuff like that. He was a menace to society for God's sake. Yeah. He was like the main guy. Right. Yeah. He was a fucking (laughs) lunchman in the movie. Look, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, Tyron Abernathy, um, or, uh, is it Abernathy? I guess it's Abernathy, maybe, um, is, um, the dumbest character in this movie. <laughs> like, not anything uh, personally about the guy. I'm talking about the character. The character's a yeah. fucking idiot. <laughs> I, nigga, what are you doing? Like, yo, no. Um, his character basically represents why you don't tell your dumb hood cousin shit. Like you just certain you just can't tell him shit. You can't. You can't. You can't. Um, there's a there's an interaction between uh, Tyron and Rafe. Like they don't they don't fucking get along. Um, and it's uh, like again, this is this is Rafe like doing his homeboy impression, and it's annoying. Like I don't I don't like any of this scene with my Coulter. I hate it. Like I wish my culture got punched in the mouth in this scene. I really do. Yeah, my I, I told you, yo, my culture is the new Morris Chestnut for me. And if those two were ever to be in a movie together, I think I might blow their brains out. <laughs> it would break the space time continuum. Right. Like it just wouldn't. It, nah, yo, nah, uh, uh-uh. not I, a fan. Yeah, n- this is why I don't. I don't need him as Luke Cage going for for it. I just don't. Like I, I don't I don't buy it. I just don't. He's fine. Yeah, he he was he was look, the first Luke Cage was was really good. Um it was something brand new and I really enjoyed it. The second Luke Cage, I mean, you literally you are being outshone by literally every member of the cast. One hundred percent. That is not you. Yep. Yeah, and, and when you are the weakest part of your show, that's a problem. That's right. Um so we cut back to the we cut back later on that night. Derek is at home. <laughs> He's making dinner for his wife, trying to rekindle their relationship because you know they got problems. And you know he's like, they got like all these. He's got all these pots out. He's he's, he's making this dinner. He's like, come here, baby, let me taste this, taste this. And I'm like, yeah, that's just pasta sauce. Yeah, 
You, you, just, you just poured ragu into a, a pot and heated it. Like, yo, check out this fire sauce I made. I'm like, nigga, that's ragu. Like, knock it off. <laughs> right. Like, it's probably don't even have, like, did, did you put even, did you even season the, the sauce? You don't need did you to. Put the little, did you even put the little Italian flakes in there? No, nah, he don't. No. You got time for all that? One, like, it's spaghetti. <laughs> like, that's, he's like, right. she's like, not we, exactly. It's not exactly the the most difficult thing in the world to make. Hey, right? baby, taste this. I, I, I heat it. Then look, I sprinkle a little bit of cheese in there. Like you like it. Yeah, I fucked you, you up know, with that. You know how hard it is to boil that water without starting a fire? <laughs> Come on now. I'm you a millionaire. I got I got all that kind of time. Um, no, nah, I would have just hired a professional chef to do it, and then I would have paid them to leave. <laughs> look what I did. I'm rich. Um. And then, what is the song? Yo, what is the song that's playing? Because I, I, hold on, I gotta turn the volume of my laptop. Oh, make it last forever. Yeah, no, yo, I was about to say no. I, I am very much aware of of a Keith Sweat song. No, it's just that. Yeah, no, I, no, I know the song. It was just that it, the audio is off, and so I have subtitles on. No, my problem with the scene is very specific. My, the song Make It Last Forever comes on and Michael Ealy's like, oh shit. And he starts dancing or whatever. That makes sense for Michael Ealy. His wife, who is significantly younger than him, I'm like, no, you don't know this song. This is not of your generation. Get out of here. Should you be listening to The Weeknd? Knock it off. She's like, oh, I remember my mom used to listen to this. We used to clean on Sundays. Like, She's like 22 years old. Get out of here. This, this was my jam back in the womb. Yeah, like, no. Michael Ealy is old enough to remember Make It Last Forever. I was like, all right, all right. Um, also, the my thing- problem with the scene was the fact that it was a Keith Sweat song. And I do not like Keith Sweat. Wait, you don't like Make It Last Forever, though? I don't like anything Keith Sweat. Are you crazy? I No, <laughs> I can't. His voice is like needles in my ears. <laughs> I hate Keith Sweat. Um, here's the thing about Keith Sweat. He can't actually sing. He's a, he's a great producer. Yeah. And somebody told his ass that he could sing. Yeah. It, nah, yo. Nah. Make it like my Abba. Abba. <laughs> nah, he can't sing. Just, look, just oh, get Johnny Gill to come on your tracks and make them better. Because Johnny Gill can fucking sing. Um, yeah, the, 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 like, uh, this is a fact. Um, it sounds like a black Eric Cartman, yo. Like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here, man. Yo, know, Keith sweat. sweat. Get out of here. Um, so the so the other thing here is they go to sleep after they have sex. She was like, "Yo, this 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 prego is hidden." Um, they have sex. Uh, good for them. Um, she looked great, and um, they fall asleep. And then in the middle of the night, they hear some rustling. Um, Derek goes up to check it out. It's a uh, it's an armed man, and they uh, they have a tussle. Um, and eventually, um, Derek fights him off with a golf club. Um, he gets very lucky. Um, the guy fires the gun right next to his head at one point, um, yeah. which would, you know, look, I, I know this is a movie and all, but that dude would have been deaf. I mean, they did, they did play it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. That he couldn't hear for a They did play it up that he couldn't hear. Like, and it was, it was painful for him. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like, look at all this. My wife immediately, like I said, oh, okay. Well, this is this guy was obviously high. It's either Mike Coulter or he hired, or uh, this guy was hired by Mike Coulter. And I said that because I saw that the guy's white, right? Yeah. And then my wife was like, "Wait, why didn't she just call the cops?" And then we were like, "Oh, okay. Well, she's in on it too." Like, like this thing is, I. Uh, it's okay to be a little bit ahead of the movie, but like we're like 20 minutes ahead of the movie. Yeah. I called the ending at 40 minutes. I was just like, this is what's going to happen in the end of this movie. And I was right. Um, so yeah, like it's a little suspicious. And then they're like, Oh, the cops show up and they're like, Oh, the detective is here for your case. Like you're going to be dealing with that. And here comes detective, um, Valerie Quaylen. Um, played by Hillary Swank. Dan, 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 dan. 
And here's the problem. They don't do a good job of having dialogue between the two of them that would not raise suspicion that someone goes, have you two fucked before? Because, like, it's not like, oh, hello, how are you guys? And, like, just kind of playing off. She's just like, hmm, you look familiar. Is it Derek or Darren? Ooh, you told me it was Darren. Like, like it's like, all right, just dialogue. Take it down a notch. Like, it's, it's not, a little weird. It's not clever, right? Like, it's really not clever. You had a you had an opportunity to do a really good like tit for tat between the two of them, right? Like it, it's something that uh, that only the audience would be able to get, and y- you know, like they like the audience is let in on the secret, right? Like, oh, she knows him, and uh, and he and he know, like it's like a game, right? Like, right. but but they they just kind of squander it. Like they they make yeah. a you make a really poor attempt at it. You're like, don't I know you? Nope. Your name's Darren, right? Nope. What is it, Derek? Oh, you sure? Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, here are the facts of the case. Like, uh, <laughs> right? It, like, it just, I would have liked her to sense. play him a lot more. Right? Like, it gets it gets a little like super villainy. At the end, like you were saying, um, but I would have liked, I would have, I would have loved a little bit more of, like, like a little bit more cat and mouse. Like I think that could have been actually pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, but it goes from like nothing to major shit real fast, and it's like, all right, like that seems weird, and it, it just doesn't work. Um, also, like Waylon or Quaylon takes. Um, takes Tracy around the house and she's like, Oh, is this where you guys were? And you know, um, you know, where do you sleep? What side of the bed do you sleep on? Stuff like that. And Tracy's like, what does that have to do with the case? Like, <laughs> like that's a little weird. Right. Um, and you know, Quaylon like literally sits down in the bed and like touches it. Like, Oh, I bet this is where he's blowing your back out where he was blowing my back out of Vegas. Like, all right, you could be a little less obvious. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. This this scene was very weird and a real missed opportunity to like have some fun, right? Like I would have I I would have written this scene of like, hey, so how's your marriage? Are you guys okay? Like, you know, ever been to Seattle before? Right, like because he said he was from Seattle during the you right. know during when he was in Vegas, right? right. When and, he was lying, there. right? Like just just to like have some have some fun, right? right. Like make like, make his wife sweat it a little bit. Like the fuck is that with yeah. this cop, right? Yeah, exactly. Like make her make his wife th- think like, hmm, like what's going on here, right? Right? Because that would make the reveal of the fact that she was cheating, like what the like like bitch, you were cheating, right? Yeah, like <laughs> if she, if Quaylen had played it to make Tracy think that that Derek was cheating. And they were like, and started like fucking with their relationship. That would have actually been clever. And then you come out and find the twist that like she's been, you know, trying to get in uh, my culture's tight little slacks this whole time. <laughs> um, yeah, it, this is a really missed opportunity. I agree with you. Um, so, so yeah, the the police like they they get all this information and then they bounce. The next day, we find out. Um, uh, Quaylen has an ex-husband and a daughter. Boy, was this a twist! I did not see fucking coming in this story. Um, yeah, I was God like, damn. "Nigga, what?" Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, she goes to see her ex-husband, um, and you see that their daughter is uh, in a wheelchair. More on that later. Um, and basically, she's like, "Look, um, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get uh, partial custody." Um, and he's like, "Look, you're never getting any custody." Fuck you, bitch. Like, you're a crazy person. Stay the fuck away from us. He talks about something about drug negligence and all this other shit. Um, and then you come to find out in a, like in a, um, in a flashback that at one point, uh, Quaylen was so drunk, she left her gun on the bed and her daughter found it and I guess shot herself and paralyzed herself. Um, yeah. which is horrible. Um, that's why you probably shouldn't keep guns sitting around. Um, 
So then they call the police call in Derek um, and, you know, Quaylen, uh basically questions him and like she this is where she's actually having fun. Right. She's like, yeah. you know, no, I'm not going to reveal myself um, to my other officers that I slept with you and all this other stuff. And and then she starts giving him a hard time and like box him in, in, into a corner and all this other shit. And then she's like, nah, I'm just fucking with you. Like, nah, like, don't worry about it. Like, that's the crazy I want. Like, I want her to be, like, super serious, but then, like, kidding. Like, like, yeah, she's a nutball. Like, play that up. And you don't get enough of the nuttiness until much later in the film. Yeah, until until it's, like, ridiculous. Until, <laughs> until it's just super silly. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit because I don't care enough. Um, So, like, Derek looks into her background. Turns out she's got all these these accommodations and everything else. And like, she's like this great super cop. Um, she shows up at his house and like, she's like, Oh, I just want to see the house in the light of day. Um, and again, like she's, she's chatting it up with his wife. Like, that's what I want. I want him to think like some shit's going on. Um, that would be cool. Uh, she eventually leaves. Um, the, the wife goes to work. She's like, I got to stay out late. Um, and, you know, Derek's back at the office, right? Like, so it's all, like, there's all just a bunch of bullshit scenes. Then Derek is coming out of work, um, and a car drives up. It's it's Quayle, and she's like, get in the car right now. And they drive to the beach. The case? There's a break in the case? Nah, yo. <laughs> get in the car right now. Why don't you tell me the address you go into, and I'll Uber it right behind your crazy ass. <laughs> I'm not getting in that car. Like, I was, see, I was hoping that... And you shouldn't judge a movie based on what didn't happen, right? But I, I was really hoping, like, with that sort of psychosexual shit she had with the phone in the hotel room, like, you need to fuck me or whatever, I was hoping she was going to try to box him in on some shit, like, throughout the movie, like, let me suck your dick in the car. I'm like, ah! <laughs> like, like, holy shit, like, like I'll tell your you wife. Keep your secret. You got to, you got to, you got to, you know, lay it down or whatever. Right. Like that would actually be really fucked up. And I'm kind of here for like shit like that. Cause then it would box him into a corner and like just like keep f- causing him to cheat on his wife, keep causing him to cheat on his wife. And he's just boxed in because if he doesn't, his life will get ruined. Right. Like I kind of like that. Um, but they didn't. Like she should have been like, Oh, we're going to fuck in the car or I'm going to tell your wife and be like, All right. Oh, you bitch. <laughs> but instead she takes him to this beach. And she's like, look, I need you to look at this house, um, this beachfront property um, with this, you know, little telescoping lens. And he looks over there. He sees uh, Rafe is in the house. And then he sees uh, Tracy come up. And uh, they start making out and they're clearly fucking. Um, no, nah, yo. I blow that house up. Yeah, no. Nah, I'd, I'd have ran over there right then and there. Yeah, I'm not just going to go home. Right, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, he ran. He ran off like that dude in Friday with his arms flapping. <laughs> like, nah, yo. Mama gave me that chain. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I would make a beeline right for that house. Nah, yo, right then. Yep. I right, look. You different than me. That's a big glass window. I'm coming through it. <laughs> yo, I'm pissed. <laughs> Give me a stick, a crowbar, or something. Nah, fuck that. Nah, I go crazy. Or like, they're like, oh. Did did he kill kill them later on? I'm like, ah, I get it, I get it. <laughs> That'd have been the end of the movie. And he found them, and he went back there and shot both of their asses. I'd be like, that makes sense to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I no, I would have made a beeline for that house. I'm not going home. Like, I'm not going home, and then you come in smelling like my Coulter's dick. <laughs> hey, how's it going? No, hell no, no, fuck that. Or if you're going to go home, pack all her shit up and throw it on the front lawn. Yeah. Be an asshole about it. This is your waiting to exhale moment. (laughs) Yeah, she had a Land Rover. I like that shit on fire. (laughs) You you out of your... Nah, yo. I feel like men aren't allowed to be as petty, right? We get to be assholes, but we don't get to be as petty as, as packing a woman's entire wardrobe up in their car and lighting that shit on fire. That's I a mean, missed but opportunity. At the, but at the same, but at the same time, like men usually do, just kill women who do. Something. Yeah, that's not cool. That's not, it's that's not right. Cool. So I mean, we're know. kidding about the like shooting them. Uh, I just shot my culture though. Now that makes sense, but not for this. Just like 
as a generality. I'm like, yo, your yeah, name is Rafe. Being and, my cult. Right. Like, you're getting on my nerves. <laughs> like, nigga, your name is Rafe. <laughs> you have Fuck to. Off. Yeah, you have to go. <laughs> um, But, yeah, Michael Ely just gets sad. He does, like, a superhero landing, and he just gets sad on the beach. Um, And uh, Quaylon's like, look, uh, there's more. So uh, when you're ready to hear it, you know, give me a call. Um, She goes back to her ex's house, and she's like, look. I'm getting an injunction or whatever. You better give me, you better give me fucking uh, custody. You better do it. No, don't, don't fuck this up. I'm, I'm mad and I'm crazy. Uh, and he's like, yeah, um, eat my ass and, and uh, tells yeah, her to he fuck was, off. He's a, he's being a real dick about it too. I'm like, yo, she's a cop. <laughs> right. Yo, I mean, look, I get it. He's a councilman and all that. And he, he just straight up like, look, the system's rigged. Right. Yeah. And you ain't going to win. You ain't never going to see your daughter again. But now at the same time, right? Like I get where he's coming from. I look, I get it. I'm not saying that shit out loud. (laughs) The system is rigged. Like nigga. No, I don't try. Like that's a big problem. I have in this movie. Yo, enough people weren't recording like at key moments in time. Where people are just spilling their guts like villains in a comic book movie about their plans. <laughs> the system is rigged. I'm, I got to the judge. I'm never going to let, like, no, yo, record any of this. Um, here's, here's, uh, some more bad writing. Um, Michael Ely calls, um, Quaylen. He's like, you said there was more. I want to know it about it. And like, he's clearly upset and, and, and he's drinking. And to show how drunk he is, he brings the vodka bottle with him. Yeah. That, that's poor writing. Well, like, how else, how else are you going to know that he's drunk if he doesn't literally have, if he's not literally drinking right then and there? Yeah, that's like, that's weird. People don't do that. <laughs> like, again, that just seems very stupid to me. Um, so he goes to Quaylen's apartment. Um, and he's like, yeah, I'm like, I'm really upset. You know, like what else is going on? And she's like, look, I think this was a hit. Um, you know, they were trying, they're trying to kill you. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure it's, you know, I'm pretty sure it's Rafe who's doing this. One, none of that was ever confirmed. Not saying it's not true. Just saying the movie should have confirmed that it was Rafe. Okay. Like yeah. I just, I felt that that was a little weird to not confirm that he was the one to try to do the hit on on uh Derek. That's just odd. Two, um, you know, they're you know, they they continue he continues drinking and he's really upset. Um they get really mad and he's like, I just want to kill them. You know, like oh, I'm so fucking angry. Um and she's like, Yeah, yeah, they try to kill you. You should try to kill them. Yeah, that's what you should do. I'm like, what? Yeah, I'm drunk, lady. I'm not like out of my mind. Like I'm not psycho. Oh yeah. yeah, I didn't I didn't you know, I'm I'm not going crazy. Yeah, right? you should kill them. Why are you saying this? Like, <laughs> I had vodka. Like, I'm not high on like DMT. Relax. <laughs> like, now you know the defenders of this movie will be like, oh well, it's because that you know she had a plan all along, right? Like to no. to to put that in his head, and then you know to blackmail him to kill somebody else. Uh, you know. Yeah, I'm not buying it, that. This this plan doesn't. I mean, I guess the plan makes it light, right? Because you at first you're like, well, why couldn't if she wanted her husband dead, why couldn't she just do it herself? And you know, you're too close to it, right? Right. You'd but, be the first person to think of. Ex- exactly. But uh, you you want him to do it, which all right, it's a third party. You're still connected to this guy because you're working on you're you're working on the case that that he is, you know, associated with. Right. And, um, but all right, like if he does it, then I guess, then you have to make sure that he gets caught. But if he gets, if, if the world finds out that he did it, there's still a link to you. Right. And he just dime your ass out. He's in jail. Who cares? Right. At that point. I, I don't understand. I don't understand the, I don't understand the, 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 the plan. Here. Well, and I guess I also don't understand the plan of the cousin, who is the dumbest character in this movie. 
Yo, that <laughs> yeah, that plan is is horrible. Yo, what? what? All right, yeah, we'll, we'll get, get there. We'll get to it. Jesus, dude. So, so Derek um, is so angry uh, about uh, finding out that Rafe has is sleeping with Tracy, and that um, they tried to both have him killed, not verified. Um, that he's he's just like, oh yeah, let me just, just oh, let me just fuck Hillary Swank again. Um, okay, like they fuck on the counter, and it takes. Point nine seconds. Um, it's just anger fucking. I'm like, yeah, she lives in an open concept. Like the bed, I can literally see it in the seat. Yeah, you can, you can, you can literally just kind of walk her right over there. Dude. Yeah, like, and then maybe trying to fuck on top of a counter, which is uncomfortable. And I don't give a fuck. Don't respond to this scene, women. That's hot or whatever. That shit is uncomfortable for every man. Every man. It's not. It it's is, not fun. Dude. It is. No, it let me blow like, you back out in the bed. <laughs> fucking movies got y'all fucked up, yo. Yeah, movies like... Movies got women fucked up. Like, no, wife, no, man. movies Movies have convinced women to get men fucked up trying to get... To try to blow our backs out trying to lift you up on a countertop. <laughs> right. Knock it off. Right. You ever, you ever do the hanging garden? This shit is, is not sexy, yo. It's not. <laughs> it's fucking... I don't think I, I don't think I know that term. I'm it sure is. I know what it is. You know what it is, and it's not. It's not sexy, yo. It's just not. Uh, it, it, it. It's. It, it. Bill Burr has a joke about about uh, uh, ha- act- actually having sex the way they do in movies. Oh yeah, <laughs> with with the saxophone. Right. Like, oh, that man. position, nigga. Come on, no. <laughs> right. Come on, yo. Look at this guy's poor back. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> no, that's fun. That's fun in a movie. That ain't that ain't for real. The, right. the crab squat, yo. All right, y'all y'all need to relax. The wheelbarrow, no, yo. You're trying to hurt men, yo. <laughs> no, no, no. This is all right. The G force, yeah. All of, <laughs> yo, all right, yo, all right. No, no. Yeah, it, in the hanging garden, you'll wrench your neck, your back. Yeah, like oh, shit. no, 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 <laughs> no. What was it? Remember the episode? I can't remember the episode where Terrence was like, five minutes is a long time." <laughs> he just like put the timer on. Like, oh, you only last five minutes. Five minutes is a long time when you're working and the other person isn't. Knock it off. <laughs> five minutes of just constant. <laughs> yeah. No. And he literally set a timer to that. Yeah, that's so hilarious. It's like, you see how long this has been? We had a whole long ass conversation about it. Five minutes is a long ass time. Knock it off. Um no, I'm not doing that. No. No, not the way my back is set up. Like, come on. So yeah, um Michael Ely decided, hey, uh, why don't we have sex on this counter top? Um meanwhile, recovering alcoholic uh Quaylen, after um Derek leaves, um starts drinking the vodka that uh he left. See, that's why you don't bring open bottles. Um, so she's like, all right, cool. I'm back in, I'm back in the game. Uh, again, her apartment also very cool. Uh, but she's a lunatic. Derek goes home. Um, he gets a knock on the door the next day. Um, or later that evening, actually. Um, and it's the police and they're like, Hey, can you come with us? He's like, what is this about? And they're like, we can't tell you. And then he gets to, um, what's that? No, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. No, come with us. <laughs> Do you have a warrant? No. Boom. <laughs> On that big, perfectly balanced door. Boom. No, knock it off. I'm not. Co- Two white cops in LA? No. I need a warrant and a notary public. Like, no. No, I'm not going with you. Fuck off. I'll drive behind y'all. I'm not riding in the car with you. Um, so he gets down to the station, uh, and Quaylen is there and she's like, uh, I'm going to need you to be honest with me. Did you do it? Like, I, and he's like, do what the fuck are y'all talking about? And he, sh- she shows him pictures of Tracy and Rafe, um, both been murdered. Um, and I was just like, okay, that was clearly Hillary Swank's character who murdered them. Like, I mean- obviously, 
Again, she's the one that put the 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 idea of murder in the you know she's the one that threw it out there. It's obvious that she did it, right? But uh, like this movie's just not this movie's just not good, man. Like it doesn't it doesn't do a good enough job of twisting and turning, right? Like it doesn't do a good enough job of setting things up. Like you have to you you say that Michael Ely's character is an ex con, but you don't show it. Right, you don't show it. You show, he, don't he's tell. Been, he's been nothing but a, but a, a nice guy, quote unquote. Right, like he, just somewhat like, he doesn't, he doesn't show a, a violent streak. Like if no, he had like a all. violent streak, but was like really trying to, to suppress it, then maybe you could buy it. Yeah. But no, this character, this character has been nothing but has been given nothing but blue eyed puppy dog eyes, right? And throughout the whole <laughs> Steph Curry eyes, as he's referred to <laughs> later on, which I thought was right, funny. Exactly. So there's no way that I'm gonna buy that he did it. Yeah, that didn't make sense. And then the way they, like, I wasn't quite sure because I was like, wait, which way are they going on this? Where they cut the scene. Where she's she's like, then you went in and then you shot them, blah blah blah, and it plays the scene as as Quaylen is saying it, right? As if he did it, and then it just like cuts to black, and then it's another scene. I was like, wait, are they implying that he did do it or not? And it wasn't like, see, but that's the sloppy way of doing it, right? That, exactly. I've had the same way, said the same thing, and I said, no, that's that's just her. That's feeding her, that information. That's the movie showing us what she is telling him that he did. Right. What you're supposed to do is, after you do something like that, it's supposed to cut back to Michael Ely and go, that's not how this happened at all. Right? But they didn't do that. They just cut and then they just moved on. I was like, what What are you trying to do here? Like, it was weird. Because, I, of course, I didn't think he did it. Like, that's fucking stupid. It is, there's, it's not in that character's nature at all. Um. So, so then, in that, like, bullshit like it, it's it's like the nightmare scene in snyder cut right it, like it's all in sepia toned um you know even tracy is is just an asshole then she's just like don't don't look surprised i was like one i i, I would not be violent towards her because i don't I, I i don't believe in that but i would have given her a stern get the fuck out of my face directly into her forehead that pushed her onto that bed. I could tell you that. <laughs> no, no, you're not, you're not, yeah, you, I, you ain't going to fuck my, you ain't going to fuck my business partner and then talk shit in my face. Like, no, no, I'm gonna punch that nigga in the head though. Like I'm gonna yeah, try to hurt no, him. Like I'm like, Dryer. like I'm not going to get off of my call to you. I'm just not, I'm going to beat him to death. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to like, uh, and, and you better not touch me because I'm gonna uh, and then, you know, what, just nah, yo, move I'm away. Beat my cult to the death. Yeah, no, we gotta fight. Yo, we gotta fight. It's fine. Look, he a lot bigger than 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 Derek. Like a lot bigger. But that's what guns are for. <laughs> Those are called equalizers, right? All that gym shit don't mean nothing. <laughs> I can bench press. Can you bench press a nine millimeter? No. All right then, shut the fuck up. Nah, like. No, there are worse things to do than kill people. I just shot that nigga right in his kneecaps. Bow, bow, you're done. And I left him there. Like, nope. Take him out. Give me your phone. <laughs> you go sit your ass down for a minute. No, fuck them. Um, but yeah, so it, yeah, it's played like he actually like went to his car, uh, like a white man can't jump. <laughs> I'm gonna go to my car. I'm gonna air this whole place out. Um, but that's not what happened. Because Michael Ely is a good person. Um, and of course, then immediately, you know, it's like a, a the court of public appeal, um, a, a, the court of public opinion. Everyone's like, did he do it? Did he not do it? This big sports agent did, did he murder these people? All this shit, right? And of course, everybody believes that he did. And Jeffrey Owen is, um, Owens is his, uh, his lawyer. Um, and so, you know, whatever. Um, they have a funeral for Tracy um, back at the house. Um, they all they all come back to the house, and Quaylen shows up. Uh, Yo, hold up, hold up. The the Chiron on the newscast says Derek Tyler under investigation for the murder of Tracy and Rafe Grimes. <laughs> Tracy's not married to Rafe. 
So it's not like they share the last name. That would be like, oh yeah, uh, that's, this that's guy is sloppy. is uh, investigate is is under investigation for the murder of Jim and Theodore Roosevelt. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> right? Like, they're not related. <laughs> yeah, it's um, that's sloppy. Like, that's just sloppy. And, and they were just like, oh, her name's Tracy. Yeah, she has a last name. Right, she's got a last name. Yeah. Or you right. could just write wife and business partner. Right, right. Like you didn't even have to put their names. Um, so Quaylen shows up, and um, and she's like, "Look, you're you're the prime suspect now, buddy. Uh, why you kill those people?" And he's like, "Bitch, I, like you set me up. You did this shit." And I like how it takes him a moment to think it, yeah, realize it. I'm like, "You yeah, should." She re- straight up says, "She straight up is like, you're the prime suspect. I didn't do it. Go find a real killer." And she says something to the effect of, well, who's the real killer? The person who wanted him dead or the person who pulled the trigger? And it takes him a good, like, it takes him way too long to be like, wait, huh? Wait, what did you just say? Yeah. And by the way, the answer to her question is the one who pulled the trigger. <laughs> right, like, right. like, come on. Yeah. Like, what? I wanted them dead. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. Hey, the one who did the bam, bam, bam. That's the one who gets to go to jail. Like, no, we don't do thought crime over here. Like, this isn't the Catholic Church. Um, yeah, so, no. Uh, yeah, so he realizes that, you know, apparently it took him more than 14 milliseconds to figure it out. But um, he um, he realizes that she, she actually killed uh, the two of them. And so he tries to grab her, and she immediately pulls a gun on him. She's like, I will shoot your ass right here. I'll kill you and call it self-defense. Don't fuck around. Like, don't. Don't do it. I'm a white woman. I, sh- I can shoot a black guy in daylight. I'll I'm be a fine. A white woman and a cop. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. invincible. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> she damn near thought she was. Um, so he goes into the house, um, and he has this conversation with his mom. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know who this woman is. Those lines that she reads are either written for her in mind or she improvised them because that shit sounded natural as fuck. And it did not sound like the rest of this clunky ass script. Like it just didn't like, there's no way that that one, they weren't like, we want Josephine to play this role. Like I I guarantee you, they had her in mind. Like you can just tell like the, it just like, her dialogue just flows like so much easier that. And she's a much better actress than the dialogue. Uh, her name is Denise downs. She related uh, to anybody who works on the movie. <laughs> I'm serious. So, like, she, yo, yo, this not, woman is really good. You should hire. Like, but she's been acting for a long time. So yeah, I bet you can find out it's like Michael Ely's mom or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like it just, it, it, it felt, it felt very, very natural. She was really good for her small role. I thought she was really good. Um, also, older older people look dope with like white hair. They just they just look regal. Like she just looked great. Yeah, you have to be of a certain age for me to accept the uh, for you to be black and have like hair lighter than your skin. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you, I I think you look ridiculous. That's fair. Um, so. For some reason, Derek thinks it's a good idea to tell his hood cousin who went to jail for him about the corrupt cop and expect him not to do something. And he's like, promise me you'll leave this, this, uh, this dirty cop alone. He goes, can't promise that. You already, you already he even says I'm not. No, no, nope, no. You already told, you already gave me all the information. Nah, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go be real stupid right now. So the plan here is for Tyron to what? Kill a cop? The one who framed his cousin, thus making it look like Michael Ely had the cop ki- killed? Like who's right. working like, on the I case? Uh, like I don't understand his thought process, right? Like there isn't like, one. Why you frame my cousin? Like all right, let's say she gives you an answer. Then what are you going to do? <clears throat> well, you're going to go tell the world or I'll kill you. No. No. 
<laughs> I just I don't understand. This is this thoughts. is really piss poor writing. Like all of this could be all of this could be cut. Like she could find another way to. She doesn't need another way to blackmail him, right? She already has a way to blackmail. Like she's at first she's like, hey, we could just hey I I'm blackmailing you, but I have a way out for you. You can you can give uh, we can blame your cousin right for for this. But she already has, like, she's already blackmailing him, right? And she could always uh, get, give him the key piece of evidence that could exonerate him. Or if you can't find that evidence, the the case will, you know, the the prosecution has nothing to stand on. Yeah, like I don't like this whole thing with the cousin could just be gone from the movie. Period. It made no sense. I was like, but if you kill her. Then your cousin looks even more guilty. Right. Like, and now that you got her captured, what you going to do? You just going to lock her up forever? Like, right. it just, it just doesn't make sense. And I'm sure maybe they're thinking, well, like, oh, he's dumb. Or maybe they're trying to make it out that he's dumb and that's the plot. But I don't think so. I think it's, I think they, they just wrote themselves into a corner. It just didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, using the power of her white woman tears, um, I mean, that's literally what it is. That's literally what happened here. She uses the power of white woman tears. Yeah. She was just like, Oh, I feel sick. I'm going to be sick. And, and they're like, she's like, I just need to go to the bathroom. And she starts fake, like about to throw up. And I'm like, I'm about to shoot you in the head. I don't care if you throw up on your living room floor. That shit don't bother me. I'm about to see your brains. Who cares? <laughs> He's about to have a real big mess on your floor. Right. Who I'm going to throw up. Bitch, you live here. I don't live here. <laughs> like, I just didn't understand their motivation. Like, all right, you get to go to the bathroom. We want to we want to shoot you. But, you know, I ain't trying to see no puke, though. Why are you? <laughs> well, you're trying to be cold-blooded murderers. Um, Feel look, free to go to the bathroom. And then there's a ruckus. Hey, what's going on? Huh? Huh? I heard a gun go off. Do you need help? Nigga, run in there, yo. Your boy has to, your boy fired a gun, yo. Like, go in there and see what the fuck is happening. Yeah, yo, she li- she, lit- she literally, like, he turns around and she legitimately hits this dude with the, the back lid of the toilet, <laughs> knocking him down, then reaches up in her ceiling to grab a, a, a shotgun shoots the one friend goes into the kitchen to kill the cousin. Um, you know, she's doing her best Sarah Connor, uh, uh, move. Um, this, this homeboy leaves himself without any cover runs chest first into two fucking, uh, shotgun blasts. No, yo, no. And so she's like, all right, cool. Now I murdered your cousin and his friend. Great. Good. Good. Yeah, I was like, what What are you doing? So she calls Derek from Tyron's phone, and she's like, meet me at the beach house. 9 a.m. Not CP time. Um, he shows up. You know, he's got a gun on. Like, at one point, he gets a gun from her. Or did he bring a gun? I can't remember. I think he, I think he brought his own no, gun. No, he didn't bring his oh, own gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, he gets it from her. That's right. Right. Um. And he and he tries to shoot her, um, as she's like approaching him. And surprise, surprise, they were blanks. Ah, gotcha. And then um, she pulls out a, a, a gun without blanks, and she's like, "Look, you're gonna you're gonna murder my ex husband." He goes running at this place at this time, so you're gonna be there, and you're gonna straight murder that guy. And then I'll I'll give you the gun back that exonerates you. Um, and, uh, if you don't, that information will go to the police and you will go to jail and you get to tell everybody about that time you had dinner with Shaq. Um, and everybody will be really impressed by it in prison. Cause I know how you blacks are. Um, also I would have loved her, her to be a little bit racist. Like I kind of, yeah, I kind of would have enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, seems like she seems like she'd be like that. She would use race play in her sex. Yeah, that feels about right. That feels about right. Um, yeah, go, go, uh, you're gonna go murder my husband. He, uh, 
he every morning at 6 15 he uh he runs across the beach and into a dungeon and, <laughs> and then you're gonna and then you're gonna murder him in that dungeon like, yo what the fuck yo who goes into a dark tunnel at 6 15 in the morning alone with headphones on <laughs> nigga take the long way on the beach Nah, I'm gonna go in the, in the dark murder tunnel. Okay, everything about this tunnel scene is fucking. It, it pisses me off, right? Because the it, dude, it does on. it does the one thing in movies I hate. Nobody wants to talk, right? Nobody wants to talk, yo. Like, first of all, what the fuck you doing running in a dungeon? All right, whatever. Um, second of all, if you if your plan as Michael Ely is to approach this dude and tell him the truth that his wife once you know you dead i'm not gonna go up looking like uh uh fucking Ezio from assassin's creed and shit right like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be all shrouded in mystery right like i want to be approachable right yeah and two i'm not gonna just roll up and be like hey 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 dude your wife's trying to kill you i'm not gonna be all up in this dude's face yeah. And he pushes me because I'm like, I get it from the dudes from the from the councilman's perspective. Who the fuck is this? Like, get the fuck off me, yo. Yeah. Right. So when he does that, you know what I'm not going to do is Michael Ely pull out a fucking gun. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, you better listen to me. You better listen to me. Uh, <laughs> What? That logic doesn't make any sense. Like, it, it, it didn't make any sense. Yeah. The whole scene is is very silly. Like, he gets off the motorcycle. Right. He's got a motorcycle. He drives to the beach on a motorcycle, uh, Ely's character. And he has a motorcycle helmet on. He then takes the motorcycle helmet off to put on a hoodie. I'm like, why don't you just leave the motorcycle helmet on if that's like you're trying to conceal your identity? I didn't understand that. Then he go, then he's like, Oh, I got a plan. Um, yeah. And like you said, you're way too close. You're like too cl- flag no, no. the guy down from a distance and be like, Hey, Yo, your ex-wife is wild and she's trying to get you killed. Like, and then be like, look, we need to talk. I'm just like, I'm not trying to like do shit. I'm, I, but we need to talk. I That's how you do what, it. I forget what we were talking about, but we were talking about like people who get too close and we decided to play a joke on Terrence and Terrence oh, that one time. Yeah. Your, yeah. Terrence came over to your house one time and you said, I'm going to open the door and I'm just going to get, re- I'm going to be a close talker to Terrence. And Terrence, who was a good friend of ours, was getting ready to fucking hit you. <laughs> yeah, he was like, like, yo, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> like, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, he had his fist balled up. Yeah. Like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Right. That's what happens when you get too close to people. Right, yo, they get annoyed, and it's just like, <laughs> they, they get combative. Yo, if somebody, if I was jogging in a dungeon, as as I often do, um, every morning at 6.15, alone, um. If I'm jogging in a dungeon and somebody walks up on me and gets close, yo, it's fight time. Like I turn on the fight track on my iPhone and we just we got a tussle. Like that's just how it goes. I'm like, hold on a second. Like, you know, you know, like, come on. Like, that's crazy. You don't just roll up on this dude. Like, also, hey, guy with headphones on, you're in the dungeon. Put your music on pause. Right. Just put it on pause for a second. Be aware of your surroundings. God damn it. And white people are amazing. <laughs> like white people just like they just they just live in their lives as if nothing else is going on. <laughs> Nigga, you're in a dungeon. Like it's like this is a scene from like I don't know, one of those Resident Evil movies. <laughs> like, where <Yeah>. are they? <laughs> like, come on. And he's like, Oh, is it is this like so he's trying to explain to him he's got the gun on him. That doesn't make sense. He's like is she your actual wife? And he's like, yeah. He's like, she tried, she killed my wife. Immediate, and she's trying to frame me for it. Immediately, if I'm the councilman, I'm like, all right, can you put the gun down? Like, I'm right. trying to have a conversation now because you're saying a lot of shit that makes a lot of sense. Right. And, and, and shit's getting a little crazy, right? I'd be like, put the gun down. We can talk. Like, defuse the situation. He's like, oh, <laughs> it just attacks. Like, what are you doing? And he's like, she wants you dead, man. And, and I guess, um, and he's like, but I've got a plan, right? He's trying to explain that I'm not going to kill you. And then the guy's like, you pull a gun on me, fucker? And then he just like starts punching. 
um, yeah, I just I, I was not okay with that. And then they, in the tussle, uh, uh, the gun goes off, and um, uh, Quaylon's ex husband is murdered. Does the city council not get a security detail? Yeah, probably not. Okay. I mean, it, I guess it depends on how high up you are. Um, I, mean, I, I don't, I don't know. That's why I legitimately asked. I like that he just bleeds from his mouth immediately, like it's a kung fu movie. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's how you know. That's how you know it's a fatal blow, right? Like, that's yeah, the blood just get, just it, it just it reverses course and just gushes out of your esophagus. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's how you know you can you can survive anything in a movie unless you got blood coming from your mouth. Yeah, you that's got such blood a coming from literally anywhere else except for maybe your ears. If you got blood coming from your mouth or your ears, you're dead. Yeah, no, you're fucked. That those are. Uh, uh, chops, uh, chopsaki, uh, rules, like <laughs> chopsaki <laughs> movie rules. Um, so he, he kills him, of course, by mistake. Um, meaning that Derek is a murderer. Like he is an actual murderer. Keep that in mind for the ending of this movie. He is a legit murderer. Um, you know, even if it wasn't, you know, on purpose, you still kill that dude. Yeah, it's called. That's why they have degrees of of murder. You know what I mean? Like he came there with intent, and it just happened to happen. It just happened to happen. Right. So he goes. Um. He goes to Quaylen and he's like, "Look, I fucking hate you. Um. That shit happened. Uh. He tried to jump me. Gun went off, and he's dead." She's like, "All right. The uh the the gun and all the fucking uh, evidence. Uh, it's over there." Take it. Get out of here. Take it and go. And he's like, no. No, you're going to try to kill me. Um, and she's like, why would I do that? I'm a lunatic. Um, and he's like, yeah, because it basically wraps up the whole story, right? Like, you get to have all your, your cake and eat it too. And she's like, well, you know, we could just, like, blame this shit on your cousin, right? You know, he's, you know, you know, no big deal. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, he's already dead. He's not there to defend himself. So why don't we just blame it on him? And so then they get into a tussle and Makuili's like, yeah, uh-huh, bet. And then he just shoots her, right? Um, and they, they start firing off at each other. Um, he hits her with seemingly a fatal blow, but she didn't bleed out of her mouth. So exactly. Like she pulls out a gun first and then he shoots, he shoots her uh, in the like abdomen or shoulder or something. And, you know, like all psychos, they, uh, they're impervious to bullets. Right, um, she's a bullet sponge. Right, <laughs> right. she's got uh, she's got a yellow health bar before her white health bar. Right, and um, and Michael Ely is kind of creeping over and um, kicks the gun out of her hand. Not whatever. far enough. Right, yeah, right. he was just like, Eek. I didn't want to make right. too much noise. No, yeah, one look. I need people to realize like this is what I respect about those John Wick movies, like. They they don't do the movie bullshit of like killing people. They're like double tap in the chest, we're done. Like they're not you know, they're not like, oh well, one shot and and then we'll walk off and then you'll look back and then like like show enough. See so yeah, she's disappeared. She's gone. Right? No. I would have stood over her. You shot her once, dude. You wanted her dead. Shoot her again. Yeah. Yeah, no, you gotta, you gotta. It's called confirmed kill mode in Call of Duty. You gotta make sure, you gotta make sure they're dead, guys. No, I'd been like, oh, that's cool. Bop, bop, done. Then, then I'll leave. Like, fuck that. Um, so he takes her gun, he kicks it away just ever so lightly. He got shot in the shoulder, but he's okay. He's not bleeding from his mouth. Um, and you know she is actually bleeding from her mouth, so it's like she's. I guess she's dead. Um, but he turns around and then again, like show enough, she's gone. Um, and like a fucking miracle of crazy white womanness, uh, she comes out with a knife and, uh, she stabs that dude in the shoulder. Like she stabs him eight times. I just counted it. Yo, it's no, it's a rap. Cr- it's a rap for you, dude. Right. Yo, right. Yo, like she stabbed you with a butcher's knife eight times. I don't care where she stabbed you. She stabbed you. Yeah. I don't even care if she, I don't even care if she got half of, if she got half of those blows in, you're dead. Yeah. You're like, your arms and shoulders are a wreck. Like you couldn't even hold the gun. <laughs> right. 
So as they're both die. in the elevator dying, um, she's like, he like he laughs, and she's like, "What's so funny?" And he finally he does the thing that someone should have done forty five minutes earlier in the movie. He's like, "Here's my phone. I was recording the whole time, except for not the whole time. I conveniently hit record right after I admitted to murdering your ex husband, <laughs> which I which I caught. I was like, "Nigga, you a murderer too." Um, which you know is fine. Um. The elevator goes down. Um, Quaylen is officially dead because he shot after she stabbed him eight times. He he shot her once in the chest, and that was like it was a wrap. The police show up, and Michael Ely, using the power of light skinnedness, um, walks out of the elevator, puts his hands up, and he's like, you know, oh, I'm innocent. Blood of a dead cop all over him. And he don't get murdered by other cops. Right. No. Look in L.A. No, nah, where they treat you like a king. No. <laughs> no, I that I am not by. They would have gunned that dude down. Actually, that would have been actually, a, I mean, I guess maybe they can't make that ending just because it would be controversial. But, like, that should have been how it ended. He came out of that elevator and they would have been like, cool. And they put 30 bullets in him. Oh, they uh, they both should have died in that elevator. And, that would have been uh, fine. The police come on the scene. They see the phone. They, they're like, oh, okay, well, this obviously is what happened. Michael Ely's name is cleared, but, he, but it's a Pyrrhic victory, right? Like, right? But at least his name, his legacy or whatever is, is, is cleared, just like his mom said. Like, you got to make sure you, your name is all you got. Right. And you know, clearly, you know, that would have been uh, a, a more poetic ending. ending. Right. But uh, you know, but America, but it, but yeah, instead, man. you got the you got the West Coast version of the Breakfast Club um, playing on the radio, and they're like, "Yo, Derek Tyler, turns out my man came with receipts, and so they got a tape confession from." You know, like from the the detective and all this stuff that happened, and he was totally innocent, and everything worked out great. I guess he lost his business, right? Which makes sense, because um, yeah, yeah, I don't know how uh, people don't really want to sign with with OJ Simpson over there. <laughs> so, yeah, I like. No, this movie's not good. It's, no, not it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. I look. I wasn't expecting it to be good. I was expecting huh. it to be fun. No, nah, it wasn't fun. fun. Like that's the biggest crime that this movie commits. It's not fun. Um, I uh, you know, uh, it. If anything, uh, the the one lesson I got from this is, uh, if you ever have to interact with a white woman, always keep your phone on record. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, have, a, have, a, have your voice memo app uh, at the ready. Um, it is on my control deck uh, where all I have to do is swipe down, press a button. I'm ready to start recording. Bam. Right? Like, <laughs> that's it. Um, I now kind of want to do one of these other movies. Is I, I wonder if Lakeview Terrace is good. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't want <laughs> I don't want to watch it if it's not. You know what I mean? Uh, it's got a 44% on Rotten Tomatoes. Somebody listening, uh, tell us if we should do Lakeview Terrace. Right, it's got to be fun, man. It's, it's got to be, be fun. fun. Like yeah. Sam Jack- And I, I, I feel like it will be because of Sam Jackson. Oh, and you know he's going to be like all good and racist to this interracial couple. Like, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, I, I kind of want to do I kind of want to do The Intruder because uh, what's that dude? The That's white great. dude? That's great. I think he's playing like a like a Trump anal like a Trumper analog or something. Oh, really? I thought so. Oh, like, like, I kind of like that. Yeah, man. Like, All right. I really wanna. I really wanna. But I don't know. I, oh I don't my know. god! Yeah, that's that takes place in Napa Valley. Oh, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, that's it for episode one ninety five for the not so great. Uh, Fatal, um, starring Hillary Swank and Michael Ely. Um, any final thoughts before we get out of here? 
Um, Look, if you're going to make these movies, just make them fun. That's yeah. it. You got to make it fun. Um, look, I need Carl Weber to do more more uh, romantic thrillers. Like, that yeah. dude's the king of them. Like, black romantic thrillers, it's, Carl Weber's the king. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah, we might have to do the intruder, yo. Like, I'm <laughs> looking at uh, a pic- pictures of this and, like, like uh, what's this dude? I, I, can't, I can't. uh Dennis Quaid? Yeah, Dennis Quaid, like. His head is coming through a a, a, a wall or something <laughs> <laughs> like Jack Torrance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we might have to do this shit. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. We'll look into the intruder. Maybe it, it might be for next week or you know for uh, the next episode. I kind of want to do. I want to do a good bad one. Yeah, yeah. I, I do like a. I do like a good bad one. Um. All right, that's it for us, and we will see you guys next time. See ya. You're watching the Black on Black Cinema YouTube channel. Make sure you check out our full reviews of black movies, past and present. And every other week we do a preview episode where we talk about a random topic that affects the black community.